everybody. Um, I have with me a gentleman who I spoke to last week. This is Billy. Uh, I'm just going to ask him a few questions, really, because I had a pretty decent chat with him last week. So, how long have you been coming here, Billy? Well, I've been coming here just for a few months, but I used to come in the past quite a lot, right. years ago, you yeah. see. And there were some very excellent preachers used to come. And I preached myself once. And, and the park just there, you see, and the people listened attentively because I was days are gone. <laughs> preaching the truth yes. and the Lord calmed them all, you see. Nice. Uh, and we never know well, what the outcome will be. We'll know in eternity yes. if people really came to know the Lord, you see. Yes, amen. And what's your history of, like, when did you come down to England and did you, did, uh, did you have, like, a... The church that you went to at home, did you find something like a similar here? Well, I was, you know, I was converted in a little mission in my hometown of Kirkintilla, eight miles northeast of Glasgow. And the man who pointed me to the Lord in the evening had preached, you must be born again. And I wanted to talk to him about that. And he explained it further to me. And then I knelt with him and he said, I'll pray and then you pray. And I'd never prayed audibly before in company. And I asked the Lord to come into my life. And a few days later, I went home, first of all. I went home on the Sunday night. And my mother came in on the Monday morning for nursing. She was nursing in the local hospital. And I shot, said, Mother, I've become a Christian. And then I threw the blankets over my head, you see. And How she said, that'll be fine, she said. Excellent. You'll maybe not go to so many pictures. I was always at the pictures the pavilion of the Black Bull. And um, then that week I went out with the person who got me to the mission and they, they were playing in the fields and suddenly got such a powerful feeling that I belonged to the Lord, I'd been born again. How lovely. And then, uh, to come a long story short, I, I, went into a, I went to Bible school in Glasgow and I passed there and then I went up to with the Church of Scotland on a temporary basis. I went up to the Shetland Islands. That's what I was thinking. There's not much Church of Scotland down here. No. Yeah. And anyway, d anyway, after that, um, I went into a mission called the Open Air Mission. Okay. And they preach in marketplaces, uh, town centres, and even the racetracks. Wow. They preach the gospel in the racetracks. And uh, I left that work after about eight years. And then I went into the Royal Mail as a driver. And then I, I, I took Jesus with you. Yeah, and the then roots. I then I um, I've retired, and now in October I'll be 90 years of age. 90 years young, everybody. Can you believe this? And did you ever regret your decision in that um, in that you know when the guy took you through the prayer? Was there ever a time when you felt like, oh, what am I doing? Or? No, never, never. I, I I always had a feeling about the Lord, even and when the lads used to joke about it when we were in a gang they'd joke about the Lord I never felt that's not right you know so the Lord speaks to you over the years yes. and then things come to fruition yes. you see and John Moore was a great spiritual father to me he went to Canada he wrote a couple some lovely hymns one, one he wrote was burdens are lifted at Calvary days are filled with sorrow and care hearts are lonely and drear burdens are lifted at Calvary Jesus is very near and the, I'm sorry I never kept in closer touch with him, but he passed away, I think, about two years ago. But he knew the Lord, and he was a great friend to me. He really so it just me. shows, really, the power of, like, individual outreach. Like, the Great Commission doesn't have to be, you know, preaching all to masses. It can just be as simple as what, taking one sinner through the prayer. That's right, and, absolutely yeah. right, yes. And then you, you've influenced other yes. people, and then, like, we kind of get there in the end. <laughs> One at a time. Well, I remember once preaching, I think it was at Ascot, and there was such a big preach between the races, you know, and then they're all studying forum. I was about to say, whilst they're running, it's not no. really proper. And they're all studying forum, but anyway, I preached, and I said, if you are interested in what I have said, there's a little gospel here, the Gospel of John. We'll give it to you on condition you promise to read it. I said, no one will buttonhole you, that's all that will happen, we'll give you. Do you know, they couldn't get enough Gospels. There was oh, a, I'm, I'm not exaggerating, there was a queue of people 
all wanting the Gospel of John. So what happened to them all, we don't know. Yeah. Did they read it? We don't know. But some may have read it and come to know the That's Lord. It. Well, the thing is, you don't know. The, the Lord's hand could have been on them that if they're going to leave it on the bus, the person who finds it on the bus yes. is the one who's supposed to read it. Well, at one of the corporators was preaching outside Buckingham Palace. And a man came to him, a woman came to no, a man and said to him, I came to know the Lord through Billy Graham. He said, Billy Graham in the That's open nice air name, mission. Billy. In the open air mission. Mm. And I said, it wouldn't have been me. He says, yes, it was you. Oh, I thought you meant and the American. No, Billy and Graham. I preached at Trafalgar Square and he heard me and he came to the Lord. So that was one I knew about. But that happens regularly, I'm sure, to preachers should go out to the people. Yeah. So That's the thing that I always think. It's not necessarily, um, like, none of us can convince somebody with words, no. but if we can cast a little doubt into their arrogance or their godlessness, yes. then the Holy Spirit can get in yes. and then, you know, all power and all yes. majesty. Yes. So that's so pretty. And did your family, so your, you, did you manage to ever speak your mum into the gospel? Or? My, my mother does know the Lord. I know that because when she was in her deathbed, she was particularly happy this day. And I said, Mother, why are you so happy? She says, I'm happy because Nan's here, that's my sister, she'd come up from Sheffield, and I'm happy that you're here, and I'm happy that I belong to Jesus. Oh, when she touching. said that, I get absolute peace. You that's see, amazing. You see, that's such a blessing. I have a nephew who's a solicitor, a very intelligent fella, and he lives in near Birmingham, and he has come to the Lord, and no one counseled him. I don't know how he must have been reading his Bible. Well, listen, um, seriously, when God wants you, it's very difficult to refuse. I'm not a Calvinist, but it's, it's you know, you, you get backed into a corner, yes. and the only way out is through Jesus. Kind of That's thing. right, so, yes. Yeah, I've experienced that. So it's wonderful to know him, and when you see the world today, what it's like. And there was a good preacher years ago, Murray McChain, a Presbyterian young man, the, the, the godless minister at that time in Scotland. And in one of his sermons he said, man, if he could, would brought God out of his universe. That's and that's what's happening today. Definitely. They don't take any notice of the word of God. No, and the anti-Christian and the anti-Christ right. sentiment is yes. growing. But we're told it will, like there's going to come a time and it's here, where they'll kill people and they'll think they're doing it for God, but that's they'll right. be Christians yes. being killed. Yes. And it's happening in Africa and Pakistan yes. and all that's these right. places. Such a shame. Yes. But um, yeah, okay, we're going to wrap it up. I just wanted everybody to know you because, uh, yeah, I'm happy to see you here again. And where, where will this be shown? This will be on the internet, on YouTube. Oh, hell. Huh? Don't worry, the tax man's not coming after your, your, I, your I, revenue. I don't have the internet, so. I will, next time I see you, I will, sorry. Uh, when when we're finished, I'll write down for you what you have to give to a young person, and they'll show you it. Right, okay, thank you very much. <laughs> All right, I'll go and see your Catholic friend. Yes. Down here, All right. You go know how to answer him, don't you? I know. He doesn't know how to answer. Well, I've read. I've got a book just now about all the media, media theory and the Catholic Church. It's horrendous. No, but my feeling is other like outside of Islam. It, it's. I think that probably the Catholic Church is infiltrated by pedophiles the same way schools. It just attracts Peter yes, Like that's so it's right. not the scripture that's making yes, them like yes. it, it's the Terrible. But yeah. Yeah, he's he's definitely over there. He's on a ladder, I'll I think. So. Him, All right then. God bless you, Billy. Thank you so much. Everybody, that's Billy. He's so charming, I love him. All right, uh, yeah, that was it really. I just wanted you all to meet him. Um, ninety years old and um, doing very well with Jesus. All right, God bless. Bye bye.